Hey friends, Alan Lee with The Handyman Journey here and I am so excited for today's video. We got something super, super cool going on. This is our renovation that we actually did a couple months ago, but we're just now getting around to editing the video. Something super exciting today, the day that I'm filming this, is our one year anniversary of this new lifestyle. If you don't know, we sold our house, uh, moved into a travel trailer full time uh, in, a, in an essence to save money, um, live better and live kind of a more fulfilled life. So if you guys are interested in that journey, like check out the playlist that this video is in because uh, this is actually our second trailer within that year's time. The first trailer we completely redid. This one we are redoing slowly. And today, in today's video, you're gonna be seeing the bathroom slash side of the bedroom redone. I'll give you guys a little little glimpse here. That's enough, you're gonna have to watch the, watch the rest of the video. But so excited, let's get into today's build. Let's do it, guys. Okay, here is our before. This is our uh, vanity here. So we got some really cool ideas. Laura's got some awesome paint for that. Got a new top and a fancy new sink. Uh, we got the idea by rv.reno.family on Instagram. That's who basically we are mimicking like pretty much everything in our trailer. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, so we keep going back and forth on ideas, but uh, this is our idea now. We're gonna just replace this butcher with a butcher block. Uh, we're gonna install a cool basin or vessel style sink. This is gonna be our new faucet. So obviously this needs to go up. So um, we thought, you know, we could replace it, but we're gonna go ahead and just move it up and then paint it and all that. So I'm um, gonna get that taken off the wall. And then uh, I gotta run to Home Depot. Laura's gonna paint here. Um, and I am going to grab what I need at Home Depot and then we'll come back and uh, get it going. Step one here is we're going to go through, fill all these holes with caulking, so when we come through and paint it, it turns out nice. And then uh, we're going to get this off so Laura can paint around that and also paint the cabinet too. Okay, here we are, without a sink. So now we just need to get this vanity top off so she can paint it. Here's what we're looking at with no vanity top. So now we just need to go ahead and I'm gonna convert these. I'm gonna put in some angle stops that go to three eighths because that's what our new, uh, our new faucet has three eighths hookups rather than half inch. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we got our drain right there. Everything's looking good. Just need to get all these staples out. Got the vanity top removed, got all the staples out. I uh, rehooked up my faucet for now, just so, because I don't have the angle stops yet, so I'm gonna grab those at Home Depot, so that way my wife can get started in here and still have water on. Obviously not use that faucet, but she can use the kitchen one. Um, so, yep, gonna run to Home Depot and uh, get everything we need, and then get back and get this thing installed. All right, like always, parked next to the race car. I'm gonna have to pull a Tony Stewart, get it out of that puppy. 
<laughs> Here we go, Harper. Steer us, steer us home. Harper, are you having fun? Yeah. yeah. Here's what we got so far. How many coats of primer is this, Laura? There's about two coats. Um, Harper, what do you think? Is it looking good? Yeah. Yeah. All right, the face of this job has changed uh, quite a few times <laughs> over the course of this day. But uh, we are back at our original plan, and I think, I think that's uh, probably the best plan. I think it'll work out great, so gonna hook up to my truck or get my truck hooked that up to the trailer drive it over there and uh, cut me some butcher block so let's get to it Here's the butcher block we got, looking pretty beautiful. I'm liking that. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it. Our existing uh, top is 36. Laura and I talked about it. We're gonna go two inches wider, so it's gonna be an inch on either side. So we're gonna cut it at 38. So it's gonna be about right here. The rest of this um, and the other one that is on our truck is actually gonna be used in our kitchen. So I looked it over and it looks like this is a quality piece right here. So I think I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use this slab right here. Just cut this right here at 38. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it at 39 first, um, just to see how my saw blade does with this, with this stuff. Because if I cut it at 38 and it left big old chunks, then I would be hating myself. So I'm gonna cut it at 39, and then I'll cut another inch off once I know that my, uh, know that my saw works great on it. So. Let's get to cut. So this is butcher block from Ikea. One thing I like about it is it comes with this uh, strip that you actually dress the cut side with. So it comes with two strips, one strip here, one strip there. Um, so we could basically dress the side that we cut, which will be nice. Here's cut number one, and it looks like we left a few chips. There's a sizable one right there, just because this stuff is not solid, um, not solid butcher block. You know, it's compressed board, and then it's got a veneer on top of it. So, it's not the most high quality, but it gets the job done. So we're gonna see what we could do about cleaning that up. Take number two, so I went in a half an inch, so now we're at 38 and a half and uh lay this out here so i'm going to score this um pretty good and then and then cut it again and see if my chipping goes away like i said before i'm not really much of a woodworker so figuring this out as i go but i think this is a technique that will keep it from scoring so that's why i started out longer than i needed so we're going to go ahead and score it and see if we can cut it without uh, these edges cracking off like that when in doubt read the instructions <laughs> Just took a look at the uh, fancy dancy Ikea pictures and they show to flip the top over Tape it and cut it. So I'm gonna flip this puppy over and cut it and then see if uh, See if I don't get jagged edges So we're gonna try that because I scored it with a razor and I still have some jagged edges here
would you check that out no chips whatsoever when you follow directions it's amazing what happens <laughs> So now what we're going to do is follow the rest of the direction since that's been working so well for us today. Um, and the next step is to install our end strip. That's this guy here. And they say to use uh, some contact adhesive and spread it on there, put it on there. And I actually put it on bigger than it's supposed to be. And then you come around with scissors and cut it. And then you trim it with a razor blade and then you hit it with uh, some sandpaper at an upward motion to try and get kind of a bevel on it um, and then you go ahead and install it so the only other thing is this is wider than our original countertop so I think I may need to cut it this way in the back um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, refer with Laura about that and see if she wants that and then I'm gonna go ahead and apply this strip to the side the bean is sleeping right over there, so I'm going to be a little quiet. So I'm going to attach some angle stops to uh, to this um, to these lines here, so I could shut this off, remove this, so we could set this table this countertop on here to see how it looks. Now that we got those guys installed, we could turn the water back on and uh, set our countertop on here. This thing was way too wide, so we're going to go ahead and uh, line it up. We want it the same width or depth as this. This is the old countertop, so get to cutting that. We're going to flip it over and do it just like the instruction says, and it'll turn out perfect. There it is. There's our back cut edge. This is our side cut edge. So this side will have the uh, trim piece on it. And then this back edge will be against the wall. So obviously that won't need anything. So let's go ahead and put this uh, trim piece on that side. And then we'll go ahead and drill our hole for the sink, drill our hole for the faucet. And uh, we'll be ready to go once uh, Laura gets it all painted in there. Now that I got my two holes perfectly aligned, this is where the vessel sink's going to be. This is where the faucet's going to be. Um, so I'm going to make this hole in the center about five inches square. Um, I'm just going to square it off, round it. I'm just going to cut it with a uh, cut it with a multi-tool. So it's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be underneath of the sink. But the biggest thing is so that I could get my hand in there to tighten that nut onto the sink itself. Here's our semi-final look. Obviously, before we install it. But this is how it's going to look. Made it enough room there so we can uh, actually turn it on without touching the wall. And again, this is why we had to take the uh, medicine cabinet off because we need to raise that. So that's going to look great. And then underneath, as you can see, there's our cutout, which that's where we're going to hook our uh, drain to. So that'll give me plenty of room to get up in there and hook that drain to it. But you can't see that from above. That's looking pretty awesome.
Okay, we kind of jumped forward big time on this because uh, I kind of put all this together late last night because I wanted a sense of accomplishment. Um, but we got our faucet installed. We got that all hooked up to water. I put in those 3 8 uh, shark bite uh, angle, angle stop fittings down there. The, um, the sink is just sitting there because we're waiting for a drain. We're getting the drain, um, I think, on Tuesday. Um, and then the top is not adhered yet. So we're going to go ahead and adhere this strip onto this edge right here. This is our cut edge. Um, and basically the way that you do that is with contact cement. Um, I didn't know this. This was in the instructions. Again, this whole, I've been learning a big lesson about reading instructions, so that's pretty interesting. I also read the instructions on the back of this. Apparently you apply this contact cement to this, and you also apply the contact cement to this, let it cure for 15 minutes, and then you put it on and, and it says, um, Carefully align the surfaces and adhesive will bond permanently on contact. So that's a little concerning. I hope I can get it right. Um, and then in the instructions for on this from Ikea, it says to put this on overlapping in all directions. And then you come back and cut it with a razor knife. And you also kind of feather it with, um, with some sandpaper. So that's going to be interesting. But we're going to go ahead and put that on there. Um, but this should work out great. So we're going to go ahead and apply some contact cement and then get this guy on there. Okay, it's been about, uh, it's been about 20 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this edge banding. I don't know like how super duper quick it's gonna cure or adhere. It says it adheres instantly. So I hope I get this right the first shot here. Boy. There it is. It looks like it cured pretty good. So I'm gonna let it sit for a little while. It says it, it, says it bonds instantly, but uh, I'm just gonna let it sit for a little while. Then we need to trim, trim the top, trim this, and then feather it with a uh, uh, sandpaper. But uh, got it even on the side, I mean on the back. The bottom will be great. So, cause really the only two sides that we need to dress are the front here and the top. So that's pretty exciting. There's that contact cement. If you guys have any questions about this, uh, this particular thing, anything we used here, go ahead and leave us a comment in the comment section. There's a lot of details that I'm sure we left something out, but we got a lot more to do here. We got to finish trimming this up. We got to put our medicine cabinet back up. We got to move our dresser back in here. Um, so a lot to do yet. And then we will be getting this drain here. Um, so that we're gonna put that on the video here. So once we get that, we'll go ahead and show installation of that. Um, let me show you guys what I did under here, just so you guys can see how everything looks. So as you can see, there's some 3-8 shark bike fittings, and then those go right up to the sink. And then there is my cutout of the bottom of the sink. So that's where the drain's gonna go. So, looking good so far, but we got a lot more work to do. Okay, here's our edge banding. Turned out pretty nice. Higher, higher, right there. You good? Okay, we got it somewhat put back together. Now all we gotta do is put our um, medicine cabinet up. We had to patch some holes, so we're letting some of that paint dry. Um, it's looking good. 
we got our dresser back in and it's looking good all right here's our complete after we got our drain installed here's our water looking pretty awesome this drain is really cool because it's kind of just a push button drain so you push it down it fills up the water you push it again it lets it drain also another really cool feature of it is you just pull it out and it has a strainer assembly so that uh, any hair that goes down or anything like that gets caught in that super easy to clean out like always there is all of the links to everything we used here in the comment section below um, but we ended up doing we ended up painting this uh, white we were going to paint it a greenish color we ended up going with a butcher block from Ikea, and these items here are from Amazon. We used our existing uh, medicine cabinet, just painted that. Uh, got a fancy little um, fancy little blinds there. Uh, my wife took that off, took the upholstery off that, and painted that as well. Um, so yeah, it is looking awesome, and it's been functioning now for about, I think about two months since the since this remodel. And everything is turning out great like always I would love to hear your comments and questions in the comment section like this video and subscribe to our channel and check out the links below to find out where you can purchase these items thank you all so much and we'll catch you on the next video